Okay. Okay. Okay, guys. So welcome everybody. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to the talk about my Accenta operating system. First of all, to set up some rules. You can stop me at any time. You can ask the questions. You can whatever. But please don't ask me about licenses. I'm not going to answer anything. <laughs> right. Please take this offline. So to start, uh, first of all, I have to thank to Sun Microsystems for sponsoring my trip and my stay here at Deadcon. I'm going to talk about the operating system that is not in any way related to Sun's business. It's entirely open source and it's built of the parts that are available on the network for everybody of you. And basically, uh, an excellent operating system is part of, part of my hobby. It's not related to my job. So that's why I have to thank for the sponsorship. What we are going to look at. This is the short agenda and to make it fast. I'm working with Debian and with Ubuntu for more than eight years, although I'm not uh, an official Debian developer or Ubuntu developer. I did build quite a few of the packages for kind of commercial purposes in, my, in some of my businesses I was working for. At the moment I work for Sun Microsystems uh, as something that is called sustaining engineer, which means fixing the bugs and fixing the problems of the customers in enterprise software, which is very interesting by the way. <laughs> And one on one of the Nexenta core team members. So, a bit of motivation why I'm working for uh, Nexenta. These are the quotes. Uh, these are the quotes from the Jonathan's book. Jonathan is the CEO of uh, Sun Microsystems. Very bright guy. So I will leave you to read these things. <laughs> I think you all know this. Well, one statement I clearly like. I want Solaris to be that easy. And the last one, well, terrific technology. It's definitely sure these things should be trivial to fix. That's not so easy. But so why should you care? Before we go further, I would like to ask you a few questions. How many of you actually are using or playing with Open Solaris in the room? That's great. <laughs> so, <laughs> the, the other questions. ZFS. How many people know ZFS or have played with ZFS or know the features? D-Trace. This is just for me to get the image. Uh, D-Trace is more interesting for people. Nexenta. Oh, that's absolutely great. Well, because I wanted to tell, tell you that it will be no rocket science and not many surprising things for you, but it looks like there might be some surprises. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the first thing, all of you, I suppose, know PBuilder, Personal Package Builder, QA magic of the Debian. So I will show you how to speed up the Package Builder using ZFS technologies and zones technologies and basically open Solaris things. Uh, since I don't like typing the commands here at the shell, I have recorded the demo that I will just let you watch. Just by the way, these things are available on the website for the later training purposes and all these things. I just don't want to waste the resources. So what you are seeing here, I hope you can see it, is basically the next center booted. It's kind of a beta or alpha version booted off the ZFS file system. Uh, to get more info about ZFS, just Google it and get some of the demos. So I'm going to create a ZFS file system that will hold zones. Zones are basically intelligent change rules or Zen virtual or para virtual machines or whatever you would call it. That's why uh, Tom said in the morning that if you're interested in virtualization, you would like to uh, see this talk. And now look how easy it is to create a new environment which is fully virtualized. We are creating a new zone that will be called PBuilder that will, that will be stored in zones PBuilder. You can just guess that in zones PBuilder there will be some, some root file system. We will tell him that it should use this, this uh, network interface. It should get this IP address in order to get to the network.
This is very similar to what XM, XM list is doing for them, basically showing the configured virtual machines that you have in your system. Sorry, wait a minute, I will. Is the network interface virtual or real? Basically, the e -A -A -E 0 is a physical interface that, that is shared across multiple zones by creating the virtual interfaces. So uh, basically, the semantics in OpenSolaris are the same like in, in um, Linux. So you take uh, Ethernet 0, column 0, column 1, column 2, column 3, and you are creating virtual interfaces that are lying on the same physical cable. So I am here telling him that this zone will share this physical interface, and as a result of this, it will create a virtual interface. Basically, what do you, what do you expect? Robert? So let's continue. So now, install the zone. Again, interesting thing is that there is some uh, ZFS thing going in behind. You should all know this. This is a plain the bootstrap that is basically creating the instance of Nexenta into some root file system. You can see some of the Sun W packages. These are basically the Nexenta or Open, open Solaris stuff. And the rest is just plain Debian or plain Ubuntu. And so you see that it took basically it took 10 minutes to bootstrap the zone. Yeah, it's using apt proxy to download the packages to speed it up. You see that the zone is installed. And now I will show you how to kind of emulate the pbuilder P -builder login. So you boot the zone. It takes about two seconds. You log into the zone, and you've got another Open Solaris instance running. It's, uh, the zones are basically very, very, very similar to Zen except for the fact that they are part of the mainline open source kernel. You don't need to patch anything, you don't need to update anything, recompile, it's uh, just working. So, apt get inside, inside the zone, it's fully isolated. It's a separate kernel. It's sharing the kernel with the global zone. So, yeah, right. So what I'm doing here is basically to adding some of the Debian packages to the zone in order to create, in order to create kind of pbuilder-like root file system containing the necessary tools. So you see the zone is running. I'm going. I'm getting out of the zone, and I will just stop the zone in order to clone it for my building purposes. So, uh, if you remember this zone CFG command that I was using in the beginning to create the zone, I'm basically kind of putting everything in the one liner to speed the things up. But as the bubble said, I will create two clones of the table zone, clones in the sense of SVN copy, SVN branches, which means cheap copies, not uh, full copies. So you see, it's like a, not even a second to configure it. See that I do have two, two other zones. And now, watch this. Two seconds, and you have a new instance. So what is happening in the background? Let me wait for a stop. Okay, I will just pause it. 
what is happening in the background? In the background, you see this instead of creating a blah blah blah, or instead of copying ZFS clone has been created for the zone. ZFS clone is basically SM SVN copy. To well, like an LVM snapshot. Very probably, very probably. I'm not working with LVM since like two years back, so I don't know where it's where it's gone, but very probably because snapshotting the file system means taking the freeze point in the time so that you can use it in the live cycle, but back up it, uh, back it up, sorry. Yeah, LVM2 has right into snapshots, so you can snapshot the volume. So that would be the same, that would be the same, exactly. So, well, where we are. So we have seen that we have cloned these virtual machines during one second. Yeah, that, that's the thing, so ZFC, ZFS clone. Here you have the actual clones, or actual snapshots, that are marking the state of the file system in certain point in time. And what comes next? I will probably boot it. Yeah, so well now you can see that actually the virtual network interface uh, was created for the zone. And I'm now logging to the zone getting the build dependencies for screen and recompiling screen, which is basically what would be builder run on top of um, screen source package files, what it would do. So all these, all, thing, all, all these things should be familiar to you, except the fact that there is a Solaris I386 architecture. Yeah, if you get out of the zone, the root file system is in the, in the zone's uh, subdirectory, basically. You see the same files there. So this is the simulation of how we would build it. At this moment, I would probably go destroy the zone, which, would, which, would, which is what would be builder people that do out of the box if you rebuild the package. Uh, more interesting example. If you are rebuilding a uh, very often package that has a lot of build dependencies. I have chosen genome session because I just uh, was thinking that it's it got a lot of build dependencies. This is, this is what would the people that do every time. And I think it's doing it. And uh, you know probably better, as most of you are the DDs, you probably know better than me what, what it takes to rebuild the uh, huge packages like some X things and things like this. So. For the people there, the base starch is at an unpacking and all this thing. Well, yeah. That's why I'm showing it, basically. Because this is what I experienced. And So yeah, I, I did speed this process up in the recording, but it seems that it's still very slow. Again, you could see some, some of the some W noise in there. Are you 
is Sun Lipsy. It's basically kernel plus Lipsy plus if config plus uh, tools like this. It's something that is called ON. And this is basically the thing that you download off the opensolaris.org that you compile, install, and run, and get uh, OpenSolaris. Self-contained, self-hosting without anything else. Just the uh, bin sh, bin vi, and it contains more things than, than basically the Linux kernel, and it's, it's done a bit differently because you basically get a huge package that contains everything suitable to run the system, including the things like graph, I believe. So that it's like not the module in its tools separated from the kernel itself and everything managed differently. This is all just one big pile of things. Where we are, 90%. Okay, and some more, some more. Time for questions. We don't use pool at the moment. We use this, this old uh, old layout with binary source and all these things without the pool. And moreover, we are in kind of transitioning period at the moment. But the repository is there. If you if you do apt apt point uh, gnu solaris point org, you will basically get oh. <laughs> Guys, well, uh, I, I have to admit that I was not watching the flash export till the end. So. <laughs> Well, it seems to be broken. My flesh died in Solaris. <laughs> Wait a minute. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's kind of a problem with this with this nice export written in uh, a software written in UK. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry for this. Uh, I, I was I was really not watching it, and it seems that uh, either it's in an issue of the flash player on the Solaris, or it's uh, it seems to have died completely. Wait a minute, we'll try to kill this beast. Oh, this looks like a real blue screen of that. Okay. <laughs> Time for a break. I have to restart the computer. <laughs> Seems that the flash flash in this this version is killing the computer. Nexenta is a hobby and it's a community thing entirely. It's no way related to some business. Not yet. So we don't know what happened. So basically until until the machine starts and until I can log in again because it's booting from this removable hard drive, I hope it's, it's okay. Uh, what the point of the demo was that after you finish the installation of the build, build uh, dependencies for the genome session into the change route, into the zone, you hold the zone and again, you, you use the ZFS snapshots to basically build the forks or build the clones of this environment in order to do the builds. So instead of pbuilder build genome session and unpacking the targz, routing into the targz, installing all the build dependencies, rebuilding it, everything copying out of the change room, you simply do the clone of this, of this built environment, you log in into it in a second, and you just start building your package. Of course, assuming the, the build dependencies are not uh, are changing, but for a personal work cycle, if you are doing it on your desktop, if you know what you are doing, it might save the time. So, can you commit the changes so that it becomes the new? Um, well, if you have parts of A and commit to B, to B and do modifications to B, can you make it so that A gets the modifications? To I don't know if I understand it correctly. Can you, can you repeat it? Uh, well, suppose you have a PBuilder CH with uh, uh, 
almost nothing in it. Right. And you install uh, some packages after having cloned it. So you get uh, a new. Uh, yeah, you right. want the original one to, to get the changes as well. Is there anything like that? Or do you just remove the first one? Yeah, so, well, the question was basically if you, if you have one uh, uh, original root file system of the, of the pbuilder and if you clone it and then do the modifications in the clone, of course these modifications are only in the clone and there is no way to propagate them back. This, this was the snapshot is for. So you either delete or the, the first one and just continue from the second one. Uh, I don't think if it's possible to delete the one as long as it contains some clones because there is like a transactional journal in the file system itself that prevents you from using the origin as long as you depend on the origin in the clones. But you will just descend from the hierarchy, so you will do another clone. Mm. You will just get back. One, one question or remark. Maybe this kind of technique would also be possible using UnionFS. If we have a pbuilder environment for a certain package and we just put a RAM list with UnionFS over it, <coughs> isn't this the same? So, so if then if you're running the, the, the pbuilder, all writes will go into the RAM disk, which is overlaid using UnionFS. Most of the packages built with uh, Lipsy, actually, I, have, I do have a slide with some statistics afterwards, and uh, the situation is that basically most of the GNU stuff you can just compile. Uh, these are just the compiler glitches, linkers, glitches, uh, lib tool things, uh, configure anomalies, Linux uh, related bashisms in, the, in some of the shell scripts, reliance on the paths, but nothing uh, normal, well, just classical portability issues. There is nothing like well, porting SIGWIN or Unix environment to Windows. Like it's it's very similar actually the systems are very similar in the core. So I will try to seek to the end because I don't believe the video is broken. I think it was the flash issue. Uh, right, exactly. So yeah. So actually the point here is that it took four minutes uh, to actually create or install the build dependencies for the genome session into this native zone. Uh, so I will actually at the moment halt the, the original zone and create the clones and the clones will be, well, their goal, the goal is to speed up the creation of the, of, of the clean environment where you can rebuild your package knowing everything is fine. Um, sorry, you should have told me that you don't see it. So, Cloning the zone and logging into it. Bang. ZFS clone, three seconds. So that's the point. That's the point, basically. These snapshot features uh, of ZFS can be used very effectively to create virtual machines, basically clean environments, in order to speed up things dramatically. So let me open the presentation. The question was why should I care? So well this is one of the things. Basically Open Solaris has got some really interesting oh gosh. What's this? I thought it's read only in order to not break it. Another of the things why should you care apart from ZFS and DTrace is the binary compatibility. 
it's uh, it's something that's it. It's something that is really rocking and absolutely unknown in the Linux world, where you have to. I, I, when I was listening yesterday at the talk with the binary modules and even the source modules for the Linux kernel and repackaging, repackaging all these. I mean, Debian has read, has got a, has done a great job with the module assistant, easing these things and making it as easy as possible. But is there really a way to ship three versions of the driver for three different kernels with three different configurations? Uh, not even talking about the, the, that you are not going to upload everything into unstable because it just makes sense. This problem does not exist on Open Solaris. The API or API, let's say, binary a, binary interface of the kernel for the drivers has not changed for the past four years, and the drivers are still working, and the new ones are still working. So it simply uh, does not exist. Sorry, I have, I have a contrary example. I have yeah. Solaris ten at my new city. And sometimes the kernel securities from Solaris break the model for, model for open ATS. Um, I think you're going to um, I have Solaris 10 in the city, and sometimes the kernel securities from Solaris breaks the driver for open ATS that have to interface with the kernel. Where does open ATS come from? I don't think it is. Uh, OpenFS comes from the, the open source project. Right. And uh, you say that I will don't change between security updates and what I see sometimes the model of yeah, OpenFS okay. have to be inserted inside the kernel. Right. So yeah. there is a need to recompile again the model. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry I can't come on with this well, but we at least make sure that this does not happen with the things that are coming from some. So I can't guarantee that this is not going to happen with, with the third party stuff, of course, but it's about the people. So, some of the history of Nexenta. Initially, it was created by the Nexenta system startup that is still existing, that, it, that is still in some way founding the projects and um, sponsoring the project. It's hosted in Stanford at the moment. Uh, there are like uh, eight core developers uh, like me, basically the people who take care of the of the things and the rest, something comes from the community. Um, well, saying here that we are sharing some of the principles, we are an open source project like any other else and we are trying to well, get the best from the community and learn the best from the community. The mission is to create open solaris for human beings. Well, I consider myself to be human being and well, you know where this wording comes from and I think it's a, it's a great description for, for the future Linux philosophy and well, the Unix philosophy in general. Uh, the best combination of open Solaris, Debian, GNU, Ubuntu should be no surprise. You should have seen that this basically works. So, these are the tools I have uh, just enumerated here. ZFS, Dtrace, Zones, PSTEC, uh, I think, is available for Linux at the moment already. If not, it should not be a problematic thing to write it. NDB, kernel debugger, live kernel debugger, very, very useful thing if you are doing some hard kernel stuff, non-existent in the Linux world. You know the Debian part of the story. Uh, so, well, the state, you have been asking how many of the packages can be recompiled. Basically, at the moment, what we have it's like 12k packages from various sources like Ubuntu, Debian, various components of the systems that have been at least recompiled and installed. It doesn't say anything about whether they are running or stick faulting in various parts of the code, uh, but that's the thing, so some of the examples. Another thing is the maintenance. Yeah, how many of the 12k packages are monitored? Most of them. It's not that like the out-of-the-box compilation. It always contains at least some of the small things to, to fix the linking issues. And uh, I'm I have not I don't have the stats, but it would be really easy to just SSH to the to the subversion repository that is hosting the source code of all these and just do some of the SVN diffs because basically what we store there is that we store there the upstream upstream for us is Ubuntu or Debian, including the packaging information and everything. And then we branch it to another directory and there we do the modifications for us. So it's very simple to take the diff between this and 
produce some statistics of how many files and lines have been changed in order to compile on Nexamda. But I, I think for, for most of the clean packages that just configure, make, make, install very well with CDBS, there are no problematic parts. The problematic parts are the pieces like OpenOffice, Firefox, Thunderbird, and these, these ugly things using uh, some well, morons. Please <laughs> 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 probably use the mic. Are you building with um, the same compiler or GCC? Good question. Most of the things we compile with GCC and some exceptional things like OpenOffice, we do compile with uh, Sun Studio because it simply does not compile on Solaris with GCC. Uh, it's just a matter of like fixing a few main files and things like this, but it doesn't work. It's a question of manpower. I think you had a question. Yeah, I'm interested in the type of build things. I mean, is it just that you have to update it? That's a very good question, and you're hitting the most problematic part of, of, of this development. Uh, basically, the build failures are various types of things. For example, one of the things I was fixing for Thunderbird was that it was not linking properly. It was segfaulting, and by looking into the code, I've seen that it's segfaulting at the zero, zero, zero something. So it basically, the linking step uh, did not understand the symbol versioning, and something that is called filtered symbols on Solaris, in, in Solaris Lips, Lip, P-Thread and other things. It's and tool chain, tool chain problem. Basically the bin utils, bin utils uh, specifically LD, does not work uh, correctly on uh, Solaris under certain edge cases. And if you hit these edge cases, you get really interesting situations where, where the linking is succeeding, but it basically resolves the absolute addresses of the symbols in, in the wrong way. So things like this, invocation of the command line. I mean, if you are invoking LD directly, you might need to alter the switches that you are passing to LD because uh, on Linux, most of the various different shared linking combinations produce the same result, but it's not true for other platforms. So you have to fine tune these things, uh, kind of fix, fix the upstream linking process. What other questions do you have for, for this part? In a minute. So I was wondering, uh, in this tool chain, uh, how much are, uh, what are your actual intentions? Do you ever plan to port it to glibc or, I mean, because you obviously included the other LD. You know, so where is this going? Uh, what are your directions? Right, good question. Uh, basically, it would be probably a community consensus, so I don't have the direct answer. I personally would like, or what, okay, I will say what, what Sun is doing. Sun is shipping GCC and using Sun Linker because Sun Linker has got better features when it comes to uh, symbol versioning and backward compatibility things. So they basically ignore the bin utils. This would be a great thing, but we have to fix all those all those uh, 20k packages to link properly and fix these linking errors. Which uh, I don't know if, if it can be solved by lib tool, but which is a really huge amount of the work. So the logical thing would be to use just GCC and GNU bin utils, and just forget the Sun stuff completely because it would better fit the GNU world of uh, side of things. But again, because there are these bugs, someone has to fix the bugs, and at the moment there are not enough uh, Solaris users that have the GNU knowledge in order to fix these bugs. So it will probably come with time, because these are really the edge cases and bin utils and GNU and FSF faults are really hard to uh, crowd to, they are worse than Debian people. And I don't really need it in a bad way, but they really, for them this is the religion kind of, uh, yeah. <laughs> and well, the third option would be to just use the Sun compiler and Sun linking, uh, which according to some Sun engineers would produce the best results. But this has got the command line incompatibility issues, and again, you have to kind of fix all the 20k packages. The great thing is that basically Sun Studio uh, version 12 
is available for Linux and for Solaris. It's freely downloadable, but it's not freely redistributable still. And it has got yeah, some... But they will get fixes. It's just a matter of time and convincing the right people. And it's got uh, some kind of GCC compatibility command line layer. So if you don't invoke LD directly, but through the GCC, you're pretty much getting to the same command line strings, just using the different binary. So again, this is a matter of time to, to fix these things. We are living in very interesting era at the moment. Because it, it would mean, this would mean that Sound Studio can be packaged for Debian and can be used for optimization of multi-threaded programs because we claim that Sound Studio does better than GCC in certain cases. I don't have the statistics to prove it. Uh, yeah, I was talking about the binary compatibility stuff. We do take compatibility seriously at Sun and we do take it seriously with Nexenta as well. So at the moment we are living in the schizophrenic world where we want to be compatible with the GNU, Debian, Ubuntu and uh, this type of world and as well with, with the Solaris type of world. So PKGN and PKGRM are the Solaris variants of uh, DPKG. So they are basically implemented using Align. Align does support the conversion of these packages for, for years. Uh, but there is this problem with the environment, basically Solaris environment, if you go into any existing version of Solaris, does use different tools than GNU. You probably know these frameworks about TAR, about uh, SUM, and about, well, basically any, any GNU tool that is available is kind of a re-implementation and in some way <coughs> incompatible with the GNU, with, with the GNU world. So I think now comes the other demo about the compatibility and how what's what's our approach to it. So I really hope we will survive. <laughs> if not, then well, as as long as there is no other presentation after me, that should be fine. So, favorite open Solaris tools, favorite um, Debian tools. So you see that these tools are basically coming from, from something, some W. If you go to any recent open Solaris, uh, you will basically find these packages there. The names remain the same across the systems. You see the binary Solaris i386 architecture. You see the structure of the repository is basically the old one. This SunW packaging stuff is what you basically get if you download Open Solaris and recompile it yourself. So this is this is something called OM. Yeah, this is the demonstration of the default behavior. So if you are working with Nexenta, we are kind of assuming that you are the young guy who grown up on Linux and who expects the things to be GNU. I have a bonus question, but I don't have a t-shirt with me. <laughs> I haven't got any some marketing materials with me. <laughs> well, favorite answer? Let's detrace the problem. So those who haven't played with detrace, I really encourage you to go for it. Yeah, great. Open Solaris, cool. <laughs> So really, you should take a look at D-Trace, otherwise you will not be competitive on the IT market anymore. I think it 
should be all self-explanatory. Question for you, bonus question. How does this work? Just try to guess. No. Simple. No, simple. Well, simple. I don't know. Search No. Right. Running <laughs> the t-shirt. <laughs> Basically, there is an exec, exec B E C call that is the main point of everything that does exec and fork or fork and exec. So it, it's it's there is a, some some wrapper code that, that detects this variable and dispatches the invocation. I, I would I would have another question at the moment. What's the drawback of it? It's evil. It's evil. <laughs> <laughs> Can you elaborate more? <laughs> yeah, no, fine, fair enough. Yeah, it's it's actually kind of evil because you can't rely on the path uh, being consistent. You can't see the files in the system. You you can well start the pin as h, but actually what is being involved something else. So it's got some drawbacks. But looking into the future and into the past for the compatibility reasons, I think it's pretty clever in order to not break the binary compatibility, whereas changing the roads. Because if you have to be 100% compatible with the past, you can't evolve. This is what Open Solaris is facing at the moment, and all these frameworks about user GNU, user FS, SFW. It's really, it's really, it's not, it's not fun because we take the binary compatibility seriously. Um, so if you have um, some personality set to zero or just unset, um, are you essentially just using um, the Solaris kernel and uh, the whole user space is a GNU system, or uh, do you still rely on some of the Solaris-based tools? That's a good question. Let me, let me just continue the demo. So we will work with it a little bit more to see what's actually happening. So we have you have seen that there are some binaries being invoked from user sound. So you can see that these are these are actually the binaries that are there. These should be all of the binaries that are delivered by Open Solaris and that are in conflict with GNU. So you see there are some interesting things like true and false and date, tar, tar. <laughs> <laughs> and well by, by, by using dpkg search but basically I will do some tricks to uh, find, find the evil. So I can't say what these packages are doing because we have these eight cars naming scheme for the packages but if you look a little bit more that, for example, some WTOO is, uh, what is it, it's called uh, tools. So you see that some of the files are in their locations where you expect them to be on the SOAR system, and some of, some of them have been relocated, which is the evil part of things that we are basically kind of breaking the compatibility. So each, each process can have a different personality, you know, Exactly. So basically the point is behind this that if you do PKG add of the driver or of any legacy Solaris package, you first, or the PKG add wrapper will switch the environment for you and the post package post install scripts and everything is running in the Sun context, like in 95% of, of the Sun context. And this, uh, as, I, as we were talking about yesterday, it works for the drivers and it works for the simple packages, it doesn't work for the huge packages. That was the demo. So, continuing, uh, at the moment we are 
very probably going to follow the Ubuntu structure of the repositories for the simple part that we want to go commercial and we want to let the user know what is supported and what is not supported. We don't care too much about the licenses. So I really like the Ubuntu model which where basically you care about licensing, you tell it to the user, but you also tell him what you support and what not, which is important for some people to know where you can where they can push the money. So at the moment we mainly concentrate on Ubuntu and uh, next center centric development, integration of the GNU and Open Solaris. You have seen already the zones, for example. The zones on, on the plain Open Solaris, they work a little bit differently. The packaging in Solaris is different. So the integration in Nexenta basically involves the integration of the bootstrap into this process, that you use the bootstrap to prepare the new file system. And there are some other things. This is the flow, how it at the moment happens. There has there had been a path where we are basically for some things going through the Debian. Uh, we are kind of, we are alpha, so we can play with the things. So we can experiment and see what works and what doesn't work. Uh, because we wanted to have the nice desktop, we have chosen this model at the moment. Another demo. Again, you will see some of the features of Open Solaris. Brandy, Brandy, Brandy. Here we go. So you should recognize these commands from the first demo. It will be again about the zones. But now it will be about the feature that is called branding of the zone. So I will basically create the branded zone and the brand will be LX, like the Linux. Linux zone implements the Cisco API of, or ABI of Linux 2.4 kernel. You see that the brand has changed to LX. Uh, I'm now taking the root file system image that was created using the Debootstrap again, just Debootstrap and tar, great tool. And I will just install the zone from this root file system. You see the ZFS pattern there again. and get into it. This should be familiar for you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a... minor issue. in there. It's okay, it's a fake Linux, but it's just as the real edge. So for the demonstration purposes, I will again recompile screen package so that you know by heart what commands are involved in the Debian rules.
just to convince you that there is no trick in it. I was able to install everything from Sarge uh, and everything from, from the Ubuntu into the zone with, with the plane they bootstrap at the moment, so it's just that simple. So you see that the packages are again resulting in the, in the main file system. And now comes the cloning. You have already seen the cloning using, using ZFS, snap, ZFS snapshots and I will basically do the same thing but for Linux branded zones. trace to Linux kernel. Let's see if you can detrace the Linux applications on OpenSolaris. I will be basically tracing the open syscall to see what files are being opened if I'm doing something in the zone. working on at the moment. We are trying to get out the version 1.0, which will be called Server Storage Edition, uh, basically because of the fact that it integrates nicely APT, Zones and ZFS, which is interesting for the server things. We have uh, kind of agreed on the Dapper Drake as being the base, uh, mainly because it's got guaranteed support for some more four years, which is, a, which is not a moving target for us, and which has got a great selection of packages in main, basically. What we had decided to do is to drop the graphical support, which means that we will not officially support it. It will probably, it's in the repository, it's working, but there are some bugs and the maintenance is just complicated. That's why we were talking about the work of Ubuntu is doing with, with Debian and we, will, we, we have to join this somehow. And some of the features that uh, we are waiting for. ZFS root is already integrated partially. Uh, OpenSolaris is able to boot from the ZFS file system, but it has to follow some of the rules from the root file system. It, it can be mirrored, but it might not be the RAID 5, RAID 3 for various reasons. We can talk about later on. We want to have the SMF uh, manifests called for all the demons and services. Basically, SMF is the uh, some re-implementation of init D scripts, as, as if we don't have enough uh, re-implementation of the init D scripts. Yeah, we don't need to wait for the GUI to stabilize and we don't need to wait for all the important desktop related things to be put back into the open source kernel because these things are progressing very well and uh, but still there is a lot of uh, things to go for. I mean over the past year, hardware abstraction ladder, some 3D things were done. Uh, I don't even remember the names of these components that are necessary for the desktop to work out among the volumes and all these things. So it's, it's progressing very well on this front, but it needs some more months to, to finish. So we aren't going to wait for it with next center. We have been already talking about the obstacles, the compilation stuff and the schizophrenia to not be like sure and clear what to use and what to not use. Plenty of choice, too much of choice. Yeah. And if you want to get involved, you can go to this website, it's still alive, but at the moment we are doing some massive changes, so you can expect having the nextcenta.org website going live. Uh, there are some things that we kind of don't want to use the GNU and Solaris anymore, because these are both trademarks, as we figure out. And this is kind of, well, sensitive. So from the brand management of the perspective, we will go with the nextcenta only. Time for questions. 
Can you talk about grub support for <coughs> ZFS and also different kinds of partitions like VDOC partitions? I don't know much about this to talk about it. What I know is that basically Sun has done some modifications to the Grub 1.x versions in order to be able to boot open Solaris on Intel platform. Uh, as far as I know, these modifications haven't made it upstream, probably because Grub 1. something is unmaintained at the moment, and Grub 2. something is not released yet. So these modifications are lying in the in the OM source code repository, and they are completely irrelevant. So if you are playing with an Xenta uh, on your real hard drive, be careful not to overwrite the grab for Solaris with the grab from Ubuntu, for example, because the Solaris is called VTOC partitions or slices. They are basically different beasts, and they need special support in grab in order to, to find them on the hard drive and to find the kernel in there. So if you use the grub from Nexenta, it will boot Oreo, Linuxes, and everything else. But if you use it vice versa, it will not boot. Uh, that's probably all I can say about it. What about Nexenta on Spark hardware? Good questions. I'm always asked this question. It's a matter of people and time. Nothing more. I don't see any other obstacles. Um, I'm going to have a lot of questions. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, well, first of all, about you know, last night, you were saying that the GNU people aren't interested in fixing the bugs. Is it that they're not interested in investigating the bugs or in fixing them once you, you send patches? Are you trying to fix them on your side? Well, that's, that's what I said. If there is not enough exposure, and not enough uh, bright people working on the open source kernel from the GNU side of things, you can't fix them. I mean, I tried some of the things, but for example, this one with the wrong resolution of the filtered symbols, I can't simply go further. I have found a workaround that works by like changing the make files in order to make it link to software, but looking at the code, nothing. I can't fix it. So it needs someone else. And I, although I do have a reproducible case, and I think I even send the instructions how to reproduce it, it's uh, for, for someone to fix it, it means get the open solar system, get the GCC, get the program, compile it, and this is not very easy at the moment. But did they reject patches? Yeah. I'm sorry? Sorry, I don't want to interrupt. Did they start to reject patches? No? Uh, probably said? not, but probably there are no official patches to be produced for this, so it's like... Uh, because uh, there was another comment that some people are not going to fix this. Because we do have our own linker, and we do have our own, comp own compiler, and we don't care about the GCC. And I, it would be probably very honest for me to say that the same thing that FSF pe th people think about the Sun Solar or Solaris engineers, the same thing some of the Solaris engineers think about the FSF people. So it's kind of a stupid deadlock that only Mark Shuttleworth can resolve, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I talk to a few FSF people and they seem to be quite excited about the Solaris and Alexander and so on. Maybe people from the new project which are who are not directly linked to the FSF um, and the people who you were talking about. Yeah. Um, are there any people from the Alexander project in the Debian new maintenance queue? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. And at the moment, uh, the names of the people I know who are working on Xenta, uh, I haven't seen any of the names on Debian as the official people. So, probably not. The, I will add some, one more comment to yours for me. Think this is the reason why we want to get Xenta 1.0 out as soon as possible. To make it easy for people to get the CD, install it, and work on it, and fix the bugs. So I'm very happy to hear that you are saying that they are interested in this. Yeah? Well, we're out of time now, but if anyone wants to ask uh, further questions, please hang around. Thank you. So I think I will be around, so if we can, we can talk more. I do have it running here if you want to play with it. It's on my removable hard drive, so you can break it.